Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and this is Jake. I'm going to be his physical therapist today and today we're going to show you guys how to conduct an A-strand cycle submaximal exercise test. Um, so with these types of tests, they are very easy to administer across all different populations um, then, and they're a good way of measuring and predicting what someone's VO2 max or aerobic capacity is. Um, so as far as Jake, Jake is a 24 year old male. Um, he is 5'6 and weighs 140 pounds. He also is an amateur badminton player. Um, so he definitely rec exercises regularly and I would definitely put him in the very active category according to the ACSM guidelines. Uh, before starting this test, I took his resting vitals, which were, he had a heart, resting heart rate of 64, which is a little bit on the lower end, mostly due to the fact that he is conditioned and younger. Um, he also had a blood pressure of 112 over 74 and his RPE was a six. Um, so as far as this test, Jake is going to be biking at a cadence of 50 RPMs um, for a total of six minutes. He's been warming up for about two minutes so far, so he's got about another minute before I bump him up to the first workload. Um, and with this test, we're hoping that I can set this bike at a certain uh, intensity to get his heart rate into a submaximal range. Um, for Jake, his age-adjusted heart rate max is 191 according to his age. Um, and submaximal test range is 60 to 85 percent of the heart rate max, put, making his range 115 to 162. So how are you doing with the warm-up stage right now? Doing okay so far. All right. So we're gonna. So the workload that I'm choosing to bump Jake up to is 150 watts, um, and that's again due to the fact that he is a conditioned male and young, um, according to the ACSM guidelines. So 150 watts is equivalent to 900 kilogram meters per minute um, in work rate. Um, so we're going to bump him up because we're getting at the end of the three minute warm up. All right. So how does that feel? Tougher? Yeah, a lot tougher. Okay, awesome. Well, you're, gonna, you're doing great. Um, so with Jake, you may have noticed that we don't have any physician supervision. Um, and this is due to the fact that Jake has no cardiovascular, renal, or metabolic disease and no signs and symptoms of that. If you were to have something like that, we would need some sort of medical clearance or supervision. Um, in addition, his resting vitals were also at normal levels. So, for example, some contraindications to, exercise, or to starting a test like this would be a systolic blood pressure above 200, a diastolic blood pressure above 100, or a heart rate above 120 or less than 50. Um, so Jake was well within the normal ranges, which is why we're able to start this test. Um, so Jake is going to be at this first workload uh, for about two to three minutes before I take his first heart rate, blood pressure, and RPE. Um, so he's so we're hoping that, like I said earlier, that this intensity is gonna get his heart rate up to a certain submaximal range. Um, before starting this test, I made sure to set, set up the bike so that the height was at his, the level of his greater trochanter. Um, and it's very important to do this because it allows about five to 10 degrees of knee flexion at the end range of motion. Um, you don't want your patient locking out his legs at the bottom of the cycle because that'll, that will likely cause injury or could lead to something as severe as that. Um, and yeah, so then pretty much this test goes on for about six minutes until you reach a steady state heart rate. Um, reasons that you should stop this test are if the patient requests to do so, um, or if you see abnormal changes with his resting vitals. Um, so I'll talk about those after I take this first set of his vitals. So Jake is coming up, like I said, on two to three minutes at this first workload. So I'm going to take his heart rate first. All right, so let's relax this arm. So I got a heart rate of 30 beats per 15 seconds. Um, that equates him to having 120 uh, beats per minute, which is well within the submaximal range, meaning that we do get to stay at this level for the remainder of the test. Uh, now I'm going to take his blood pressure. So with blood pressure, and especially while they're exercising, it can be a little tricky. Um, what I like to do is squeeze their left arm uh, in between my arm and my side in order to keep everything steady. Uh, you don't want your patient to be moving to hold it, be holding his arm up or for a lot of things to be moving because that could cause a lot of artifact. So I'm going to take his blood pressure first right now. So I got a blood pressure of 132 over 74. 
over here, um, which is something that we do like to see with increased workload. And then what would you say your RPE is right now? Uh, tough one, I would say, say about a 12. About a 12, okay. So 12 rating puts him in between fairly light and somewhat hard. So for those of you that don't know, RPE stands for rate of perceived exertion. And that's kind of a way for the patient to tell us subjectively how their body is feeling and reacting towards exercise. Um, so at a certain intensity, there's a way to kind of correlate someone's RPE towards what their heart rate should be. Um, and yeah, so as I was saying, with, with an exercise like this, you expect to see these normal increases in heart rate and systolic blood pressure. Um, that's because due to the fact that you're, you're requiring his body to work at a higher level, so his body needs to work a little bit harder to get blood and oxygen to his working muscles. Um, so abnormal things that you would see is if, for example, if his heart rate or systolic blood pressure decreased, um, that's a sign to stop the test with an increasing workload. In addition, you're also looking for his diastolic blood pressure to remain around the same. Uh, we like to say within plus or minus 10 millimeters of mercury throughout the whole test, um, and which it did. So his diastolic blood pressure of resting was 74, and his last recording was also at a 74. So you expect to see these around the same category. Um, so yeah, so then coming up on this fifth minute, uh, we're gonna be taking his heart rate, blood pressure, and RPE once again, and then another heart rate at the sixth minute just to make sure that he's in steady state. Uh, steady state is uh, when his heart rate reaches, or when his heart rate reaches a plateau, and these two readings need to be within five beats per minute for us to terminate the test. Um, so how are you doing? Doing okay so far. Okay, you're doing awesome. Um, Thanks. So yeah, so we're coming up on that fifth minute, so I'm gonna take his heart rate again. So I got a heart rate of 32 beats uh, per 15 seconds. Um, so that is gonna be a heart rate of 132 beats per minute, uh, which is again within the submaximal test range. So we're in a good spot. Uh, and I'm gonna take his blood pressure. So I got 146 over 76 for his blood pressure, uh, which is a normal response. And then what would you say your RPE is again? I'd say about 13. 13. Okay. So that is somewhat hard on that scale. And I'm going to take his heart rate one more time just to make sure that he's in that submaximal range and that's, has reached steady state. So I got a heart rate of 33 this time. Um, that equates it to 136 beats per minute, uh, which is plus or minus five beats per minute within uh, from his last reading. So I can now bump him down for a cool down. Uh, you're gonna bump him down back to his warm up uh, rate, which is 25 watts. Um, and he's gonna stay in this cool down for about three to five minutes. And you're gonna continue, like I'm gonna continue to monitor his heart rate, blood pressure, and RPE. Um, you would expect to see these values decrease back to his normal starting, like his resting vitals. Um, and with someone like Jake, you'd expect to see these kind of come back a little bit quicker, just due to the fact that he is in shape and well-conditioned. Um, so yeah, so tests like these are very good. They're easy to administer on any sort of population. Uh, they'll probably be a little bit more accurate with the more like sedentary and older population. Um, but by using all of these vital signs, his heart rate, this workload that we set him at, we're gonna be able to use a nomogram and both a predictive equation in order to calculate what his predicted VO2 max is. So thank you very much and hope you learned something from this. <laughs>